Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here, and we're back. This time around, we get a live recording of Empo against Pogis for Smog on Tour quarterfinals. Um, for those of you who don't know, Empo had an absolutely amazing regular season, hitting 78 total points, which beat Blue's all-time record for the most points in a regular season ever, which in and of itself is quite frankly amazing and shows Empo's prowess against oh, in all three metagames, honestly. And... On the other side is a very worthy adversary as well, Pogis. Um, while Pogis doesn't quite have an individual trophy under his belt, he's made it far in a number of playoffs, and he showed that he's a very versatile player, um, being competent not only in OUs, but also in lower tiers such as NU and Ubers. Um, so that's really cool. Um, definitely going to be a tight series, um, one to watch. My favorite of the rounds, in all honesty. Um, look at the teams. Empo's using something that's uncharacteristically bulky, which is always interesting to see when he branches out. Um, it has Ditto, Mew, which could very well be the Imprisoned variant, um, Block, Imprison, Transform. Powdon, Toxapex, Clefable, and Corviknight. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how he pilots this team. In all honesty, it looks pretty weak to things like Rotom Heat and Specs Aegislash, as it doesn't really have any like resists to them, in particular Aegislash to Shadow Ball. But he's only facing a Dragapult, which probably could be walled with a combination of the Pex and specifically the Clefable. Um, on Poach's side, he's got a bit more of a proactive balance with Excadrill, Dragapult, Clefable, Toxpex, Mandibuzz, Ferrothorn. It's going to be interesting to see if those spikes can potentially stay up if it's able to leech seed the Corp Knight. But if it's not leech seed, that could be a bit harder. Um, and we're going to see Ditto lead into the Dragapult. And for some reason, they both switch out. Um, I guess that might indicate it might not be a U-turn. Maybe you scared a Scarf from both sides. I don't know. But um, Empo doesn't actually say the moveset in the chat, which is unfortunate. So we're going to just see a Clefable come in on Amandabuzz, and we're going to see a knockoff into the Clefable for 13%, and a Moonblast into Amandabuzz for 50%. So that could reveal it's not a plus special defense Amandabuzz, which would make a lot of sense here, as running fast with foul play could make, it, which could make the team better against Bisharp. Um, of course, if it's Body Press, Ferrothorn, or Wisp on the um, Dragapult, relying on those measures could potentially go a long way. Either way, we're going to see a Roost here from the Poja side, as a follow-up Moonblast is a little less, 40 8% leaving it at 52%, so um, it's looking like it's just a standard defensive Clefable here. Just a matter of its utility or its wish. Um, seeing as literally every member of Empo's team has recovery built in, I'm not sure if Teleport plus Wish would make the most sense here. I think Combine as a win condition actually could make a ton of sense. However, um, let's wait and see. As the Moonblast is 14% to the Ferrothorn, and with Lepter's recovery, it leaves it at 93%. Potentially able to set up Stealth Rocks or Spikes, depending on if the Drill is also Hazards. We're going to see a knockoff here, so not respecting the possibility of Flamethrower on Stealth Rock. So it's actually a pretty good turn there anyway, so it's getting chipped on this Ferrothorn. But the Ferrothorn is going to reveal Thunder Wave, and Thunder Wave into this Clefable isn't great for the, um, the Ampo side. Sorry about that. Um, just turned, something just turned on my base because I just turned off real quickly. But um, yeah, so Thunder Wave there is going to definitely um, hinder the effectiveness of the Clefable in the long haul. And a, dra a power up there, unfortunately missed, as it went into the Hippowdon, which is like the Rocky Helmet, but in all honesty, I don't think that would do a KO. Um, I think it would probably do around 37 to 42 percent, if I had to guess. I actually will calc it just for the sake of it. Um, Hippowdon, Crystal Wall versus Ferrothorn. Power Whip. 37.6 to 44.7. I know you can't see it, but yeah, um... So just around that range. Um, Stealth Rock can be set up there on the following turn, and then the Pex is going to lure in the status absorbing Fable, which can potentially knock it off, which is increasingly problematic for Pogis, as now Stealth Rock are on his side, and Sand can potentially chip it as well. So, um, in all honesty, the miss helped Pogis, as it didn't have to take the Rocky Helmet damage, um, seeing as it's not leftovers on a Powdown, and there's no other item that it could possibly run on this team, as there's no need to run Smooth Rock, or any like offensive stuff like with the jack button, just because this is a very defensive team. So yeah, it's definitely gonna be Rocky Helmet and Pat on. Um, so if that's not a wish Clefable, then that actually favored Pogis in my eyes. But anyway, Toxic Spikes there from Pogis is cool, as it hits both Mew and it hits the um, Ditto, and the Clefable's already paralyzed. Basically, um, hitting Ditto happens even if it transforms into Pax, because you're taking the Toxic Spikes and Stealth Rock before you um, transform. So that's always something worth noting in these type of matchups, Toxic Pex versus Ditto. Anyway, Power Whip into the Toxic Pex there is 26, and now he's probably scouting for the knockoff. So he goes to Powdown knowing he doesn't mind taking the 
the um, knockoff with the Rocky Helmet. However, he actually ends up coming in on a Thunder Wave, which is even more favorable for the Empo side. And he goes for an Earthquake in the Mana Buzz. Um, perhaps it's not um, going to be the knockoff. Right? Oh, it's Toxic Apart on. This looks really good for Empo, given that it got Toxic off on the Mana Buzz there. As the knockoff plus Toxic leaves the Mana Buzz at just above a quarter health, below, below a third health. Um, the thing is, he doesn't really need Mandibuzz in this match in particular, so um, I thought Knockoff was not a bad play at all, even if it did mean incurring the risk of Toxic. Now knowing that it has Toxic, actually, it can kind of be a threat to a Wish variant of Fable, as you stall Wishes with Earthquake. And then Earthquake plus Toxic threatens the remainder of the team with Mandibuzz being chipped. Especially with Ferrothorn. No longer having leftovers intact and being kind of low, but that only did 36, so I'm inclined to believe that this is probably a combined life orb variant of the Fable, which on the one hand does give him a win condition, but on the other hand, if that's a hit of toxic specs on Empo's side, is simply not going to go too far. And that combined with the fact that it likely lacks wish if that earthquake's only doing 30 for 6% and it's physically defensive, means that the Ferrothorn is low to stay, and the man gonna need to recover on up. It's gonna go for self well here, pretty much confirming our hypothesis that it's likely to be a combined variant. Um Thinking for last moves on this class could be Thunder Wave, could be Encore. There are definitely a number of options here that are very viable. I don't know if it's best for um, the Porter side to pursue this immediately. In fact, I wouldn't blame him for going back out to Ferrothorn here, yes. And he's going to like to do just that on the knockoff. Only does 5%. How appears unfortunately going to miss for Pogis, leaving the Tox specs near full health. Now the Powdown is going to come in on another predicted Thunder Wave, and it's going to indeed take the Thunder Wave with ease, and it's going to come in at 70%, threaten out the Ferrothorn, as the Flavor comes in and takes another 37% from that Earthquake. Moonblast Dare does 44%, however, that leaves Empo's Hippowdon quite low, um, as Moonblast did 44 and now the Flavor for Empo is going to come on in here, interestingly enough, on the Softboiled. Um, Moonblast could have potentially took the yard from that range, so I'm not sure if that was the um, most risk-free play. However, I think he might not be Haze on tax specs, even that he's got Ditto. So I think in anything, this match might actually favor Empo, or Pogis rather, if this is in fact a combine variant, which I'm inclined to believe given that it's life orb. However, this could be a faster Iron and Corviknight, or maybe it is Haze after all on the tax specs. One of those outs would go a long way. Anyway, it's Rocky Helmet Corviknight for Empo, which is a really smart set on this team in my opinion. It's Rocky Helmet Chip can go a long way in fending off threats on the physical end, so yeah. Um, however, the Toxic comes in with the Defog, and it's now in a position to potentially triple something, or set Toxic Spikes up again, as it goes for the ladder as Clayball comes in, which is paralyzed. Um, we're going to see a double in the Toxic Specs on a Scald, predicting that from Empo, from Pogis into Empo, and it's not going to burn. However, Pogis is going to have more opportunities to do just this, and he's going to burn on the second opportunity. And Empo is also going to go for the same line of play and get the burn in his first turn. So now, all of a sudden, both of these packs are on a little timer to force recoveries, although it's not too bad. It doesn't stack and proactively become more and more like poison, of course. So that's worth noting. Um, however, the um, Toxic Spikes on Empo's side is going to be continuously able to soak up Toxic Spikes, but if another switch pattern is prompted, then who knows what will happen. However, Empo predicts Pogis to go to the Ferrothorn there, and she gets a Scald off, but it crits, it doesn't burn though, so it leaves it at 37, and now the Corvinet comes in, which is going to be able to easily, easily defog, and again, this Ferrothorn stuck being pretty damn low, so any burn would also look pretty much permanently crippled beyond um, repair, seeing as this probably isn't going to be a Wish variant of Fable. Um, Corvinet's going to actually allow itself to take a Thunder Wave, which is interesting. And now Dragapult comes in here, now and it could Hex, and it's a full Paralysis, so there's no defog possibilities there either. So all of a sudden, this Dragapult looks really good, with the Clefable being paralyzed, so who knows what'll happen. The Pex being burnt, the Hippowdon being weakened, and the Corviknight being paralyzed and slightly weakened as well. Um, Mew would also take Taxi Spikes upon entering, and as you see, that Pex is 64% to Empo there, so that reveals that it's either Modest Spell Tag or a Choice Spex variant. Um, Really nice setup here for Pogius with the Toxic Spikes and the Paralysis combined with a likely modest Hex Dragapult. Um, I personally think that his team, team structure is really cool. 
While I don't love how it matches up with things like Rotom Heat, as you pretty much rely on Dragapult to check it, and that's not a great answer. And um, Bulk Up Zero Aura probably wins on the spot, unless that's a Scarf Excadrill, which I'm not super familiar with in this current metagame. Um, then I think that this team stands up really nicely to a lot of things that you'd encounter in the metagame right now. Um, spreading status and then abusing Hex on teams like this is great, and Empo didn't bring in Ghost Resistance game, so it's a really nice matchup pick. However, of course, this drag pull leaves itself susceptible to revenge chilling from Ditto, which is going to become a faster drag pull of its own, and both stab moves it super effectively. So you have to wonder if he's going to go to Clefable here, which is at 79%, but should be able to take two hexes because it's not status, or if he's going to let go of something weakened like Farathorn, or even potentially uh, Mandibuzz, as Mandibuzz seems quite useless in this match, but all honesty. Rocks on Impo's side are no longer able to go up due to Hippowd on being dead. Um, as for the potential Mew sets, I think it actually might be a Combine plus Steward Power variant, with, or even a Cosmic Power plus Steward Power variant with Body Press to attacks, um, just because it fits the bulkier composition of the team. However, a Nasty Plot plus Draining Kiss or Soft Bolt set is also within the realm of possibilities. The Imprison plus Transform set seems less and less likely as time goes on, just because there's nothing to really take advantage of the removal of opposing passive elements. Um, so I think it probably might be more of a win condition. He's going to elect the Fodder the Farathon, which, again, in my eyes, was a fine play. So now he's going to be able to get the Fable in comfortably, and he should be able to get some Combines and Moonblast in if he so pleases. However, the Fable from Empo comes in, and Poji seems hesitant to proceed against it, as he could have Thunder Wave, or Encore, or Knockoff, or so on and so forth. Actually, already revealed Knockoff, I believe, so this makes a lot of sense. I wonder if he's going to go to Extra Drill this time around. Going X Drill and then doubling into Dragapult could potentially be applied, um, as the X Drill could lure in the Corv Knight. However, that does risk the Clefable calling that play and staying in, so I don't know if that's a necessary risk for someone like Pogis in his position. Instead, he's going to retreat to Paxover, not the X Drill, knowing that a knock could potentially be coming, and he's going to lose his Black Sludge, but he's going to be able to sit there nevertheless, as Sand is going to run out in a couple turns, and on top of that, it has Regenerator and plenty of recovery PP, and this sequence is going to allow him to double in the X Drill safely, into the Tox Specs, which also now is going to allow a double to Dragapult if I am in Pogis' issues. I definitely do that, as the Corv Knight's very likely, and if this stays in for whatever reason, then it also isn't going to do great against a Hex Dragapult. So, yeah, I think the double to Dragapult is going to happen. However, the Corv Knight comes in, and uh, Pogis goes for the really conservative play, and I, I can't help but think that was uber conservative. I don't love that. But he's going to be able to not be, he's not going to be punished for that, as the Corv Knight gets fully paralyzed as the Dragapult comes in. Um, that's unfortunate for Empo for sure. So it looks like Pogis is a real upper hand here. With that said, though, if it's Rocky Helmet Body Press, I'm inclined to believe that it's a really bold physical variant, which could even just have U-Turn as the other attack. So while U-Turn could have been good there to get in the Ditto, I don't know if you could really take advantage of this in Long Haul, as Pogis wasn't risking a ton. Even a Brave Bird might not have a chance always to a Kiao. Um, so... Therefore, I just don't think this was the worst play by Pogis, although I think that the initial double is a lot less risky as well. But with that said, the Mew's finally in, and it reveals its leftovers, so we're going to finally be able to see what it's going to do, if it's going to be able to turn this game around or not. He's going to go for Nightshade, which doesn't do much as the Pogis Clefable combines, and I don't think Nightshade's going to be able to take out this Clefable. So barring um, some unforeseen circumstances... The Mew is going to unfortunately fall short, and Pogis is going to upset Empo in the SS, SS game of their set, which is a huge win, as in my eyes, Pogis is actually favored in Oras as well, as Oras is Empo's weakest of the three, and Pogis has experience playing it in World Cup. But SM is still a tier that Empo is very comfortable in, and should be able to thrive in against an opponent like Pogis, who's more of a general player as opposed to someone specifically tailored to playing in any individual tier. Um, there was also a very conservative Shadow Ball there. I think that kicking Hex into the Mew is fine. But with that said, x -Drill comes in, and yeah, that's going to be a Corv Knight in, but every time Corv Knight comes in, he's just going to go Dragapult. Iron Head there also to chip it down a bit more. Yeah, you take Rocky Helmet, but your leftovers negate it. And now Dragapult comes in almost undoubtedly, and it comes in on a Brave Bird, which, as I said before, isn't going to Tokyo. It only does 42%. Hex takes the Corv Knight out, and now we're in a 5-3 to three position, and it looks like this game is falling apart for Empo. Well, it has been for the last couple dozen turns, in all honesty. Keeping the Mandibuzz alive is actually smart, as potentially take a Hex from this, 
And you could also fodder off the Exe Drill, potentially, although with the Corbinite Gun, it's actually a threat. So maybe foddering off Toxpex makes more sense. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Hmm. Um, he's going to go Mandibus here, interestingly enough, on that Hex. It does 28%. So that reveals that it probably was a modest Dragapult, um, after all, given the damage. And it was probably a fast Mandibus. Now, Clefable comes on in here, and it should be able to win the game, barring um, really unlikely circumstances. However, this Mew could potentially pose a threat. Net shit's on that Moonblast is 33. Um, so now we've got a bit of a play that we got to come here. I think that Poe just Moonblast. Um, oh, Nightshade there. I'm not sure about that. On the Calm Mind, and now um, Poe just is just going to be probably much, pretty much forced to spam Moonblast here, I presume. I think Ampo probably softballs here. Yeah, Roost. Okay. On that Moonblast, this is 47, so it's doing enough to pretty much force consistent recovery. Um, can't two kill here though, so if you're gonna nightshade or taunt, that's just a turn. You go, but he, he's nightshades on a softball. Really good play there from Pogis. Um Nightshade again here, and it's gonna moonblast doing 53. So yeah, with leftovers intact, at least he's able to out recover the damage, but um, another combine here could do the trick as well. So to wait and see. Um, of course, if he combines on a nightshade, that's catastrophic. We're gonna see a roost here on another moonblast. I think Pogis playing it safe is right because also he could eventually stall the roost PP. As you see, he's really doing about half anyway. So yeah, only really gaining leftovers minus one or two percent. Another softball there from Pogis is great. Um, now he's going to taunt on a combine. So it's a good play there from Empo. However, Nightshade is still only going to be a four hit KO. And Moonblast is doing enough to where it's hard to recover it off fully. So we're going to be wasting PP. And Moonblast is there, maxed out at 56%, which means that you're not really gaining anything with softball plus leftovers. So, another combined here could potentially do the trick, but instead it doesn't take advantage of the max roll and just goes for the Moonblast again, which in my eyes is also a fine play. So, he gets max roll here, he's able to kill it. He doesn't, though, he falls just short, but as you see, we're wasting a lot of roosts here. We have seven left at this point in time, and softballs are coming off. I mean, that the taunts aren't really happening, and 57 there, yeah, I mean, you see how much you can do. This isn't really a winnable 1v1. And wow, he taunts on the softball, which is an impressive play. Ampo getting all these turns right, don't get me wrong, but Moonblast is still doing far too much, and has more PP than Roost, of course. And finally, he's able to land a critical hit there. So now it's going to come down to this, and I don't see a world in which the Poetry side is going to fall short with his combined Fable here. I think he just goes for the safe Moonblast, though, anyway. Um, I don't really see a drawback because in case this is like Encore or Thunder Wave, you want to get attacks off without incurring any potential nonsense. Um, it also probably does north of like 35, 40%. And I'm saying it's probably like 43, 45. Seeing it's that much to Mew. And yeah, Clef is more special bulk because it naturally invests in it a ton. But um, Mew's still very bulky naturally. So even if it's just maxes through with physical defense or speed, it shouldn't be taking that much more than the Clefable from plus one life orb or the opposing Clefable. I think Pogis is taking his time here just to make sure he maximizes his odds, but ultimately I feel the play is Moonblast. Combine is fine, but this is you loop yourself into Combine with Encore or Thunder Wave, and then Ditto comes in, it just takes one crit, and then it may be an outside chance for Drill to come in and try and revenge kill it, but then also be like forced into a counter sweep. He goes Drill here. Um, okay. That's interesting. Um, I think against the Posing Drill, he's probably fine as the... Um, Pex might be knock. I don't know. He goes 55% with Earthquake there. I'm not loving the potential of this getting ditto on it. So even if it's only a 57, um, probably just one crit away from winning. So, hmm. Yeah, I think this would be a choke to take the kill here with Pogis. I think that if you're um, Pogis here, you actually go back to Clefable. No, he takes the kill. Okay. So here comes. Um, obviously, the Earthquake will take this out. If it's knock on Tox Specs, then Pogis is more than okay, um, barring in multiple crits. Um, as Flamethrower should take this out from this range, of course. So he goes Dragapult. So that didn't catch he's likely not going to be knockoff, but also Scald probably kills this since there's a lot later space HP. So 
He needs to get crit twice, so I think this was actually fine by Pogis here. Um, Earthquake with a 67%, and Scald is going to take it out the low HP extra drill that was dittoed, of course. So that's a wrap. It's going to be a 1 0 lead for Pogis, upsetting Empo in SS, which is arguably Empo's best tier and the one he had the most success in tournaments like SBL. However, he, he's kind of verbally said that he prefers SM, and that showed during the regular season as he went undefeated in SM over three weeks, which is absolutely absurd. So, definitely waiting to see Empo pick SM for game two. It's always a delight to see him play, so I'll pause until that game starts. Okay, guys, very quick turnaround. As Po just loads up a team that, if I had to guess, came right out of Vito's builder. Um, so yeah, looking at this, he's got a Rotom Heat, which is kind of what tipped me off to the Evito thing. Um, but that aside, um, he actually, he also has a Mawile, Jirachi, Tangrowth, Landris T, and Tapu Fini. So looking at the team structure, um, I'm inclined to believe that, um, the Landris T is going to get the Choice Scarf variety. And it's probably going to be Rocky Helmet on the Tangrowth with a specially defensive Stealth Rock. Jirachi, uh, Bulkier, Tapu Fini, uh, Mobile, which could be four attacks or swords, and just a pivot Rotomi. Keep in mind that it's almost definitely not going to be using Defog or Nasty Plot in this generation. Uh, it, could, it could Defog, but yeah. For example, I, what? I don't know what this means. Um, anyway, Empo using a more um, generic Empo team. You've seen him use teams like this before plenty of times. It has Megalopony, Garchomp, Zapdos. Kartana, Tapu Fini, and Jirachi. So interesting to see two Jirachi plus Fini cores on the defensive end of the spectrum. I'd have to guess that both are of the um, utility variety, as Choice Scarf wouldn't make much sense. However, it's probably going to be Stealth Rock Guard Chomp for Empo, so he might just be full on Wish Protect, or even Wish Iron Head Body Slam U turn. Whereas on the Poja side, I think it's more likely to be Stealth Rock, as running Stealth Rock and Mawile isn't too likely, and I think he needs that Lander's T for speed support. Unless Poja is rocking the Scarf Jirachi with Trick. Which could also potentially go a long way here if he's able to trick the opposing Jirachi or Dzapdos. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But trick is a lot less effective in SM as Mega Evolutions are pretty much found on every team, and on top of that, Z moves are found on every team as well. It's too slow. Glad I asked for your input. Thanks for criticizing thankless contributions. Oops. All right, we're going to see a Mawile lead into Tapu Fini, as um, I just kind of shrug off the idiot that's spamming me right now. Um, anyway, Mega Mawile is going to be intimidating this, of course, which isn't going to really matter, but um, it's probably going to Mega Evolve here and go for a Play Rough or a Thunder Fang. And that's going to take a Hydro Pump for 53%, interestingly enough, as the Play Rough does 62. So that's going to be able to 2 kill the Mega Mawile. Um, so Mega Mawa is likely forced out into the opposing Tapu Fini, the Jirachi, or even the Tangrowth if it happens to do the Assault Vest variety. Ignore this dude's PMs. Um, yeah, okay. That'll help limit distractions. He's going to go for another Hydro Pump in that Jirachi, and as you see that it only does 23%, then it is in fact a specially defensive Jirachi. So that's interesting. Um, the fact that it did 53 to one and then 23 to the others, honestly kind of laughable. But yeah, it is indeed going to set up Stealth Rocks. Um, so the guard champs can come in likely to do the same. And also what's cool is since it's paired with Misty Train, it's incapable of taking body slam paralysis or a potential toxic or will was from Roden Pete and even a potential sleep powder from the, the Tangrowth, which is going to come in here on a sword dance. So going with the proactive approach here, I'd have to imagine it's not going to be a Z Dragon Dragon. I think it's Z Rock and I'll likely just cause pairing Z Dragon with Vinny while most targets like Landers T, Zapdos, Latios, Latias, or the Omega varieties aren't grounded. A lot of other targets, such as Tangrowth, um, are grounded. Tangrowth and potentially Chansey or Mew on stall teams, and even bulkier waters like Alamoa on those stall teams as well. So, yeah, and then there's like Quagsire, um, any variant of Slowbro. So, yeah, um, I just don't think that Z Dragon would make much sense in this team, even if there is some element of synergy there to open up for potential um, Kartana and Megalopony. It just wouldn't make much sense when paired with Tapu Fini. However, he goes for a stealth rock there, not another sword stance to try and claim the kill. So maybe Dizzy Dragon is just waiting for that. So I wouldn't be entirely shocked if we see Pogis pivot out to one of his steel types here to try and take his Z move and then go right back to this. However, he might be confident it's not Z Dragon seeing as it's paired with Tapu Fini. And if that is the case, then he might just stay in and hidden power ice as well. 
or even go for a Giga Drain if that is a chance of killing, which I don't think it's a guaranteed roll, so I don't think that's as likely. As for Empo, I think if this is Z-Rock, then I wouldn't actually pursue this immediately. Um, as you could easily come in again on Rotom Heat, Drachi, or Mobile, and potentially Sword Sense again. However, he sees it differently. He's going to go for the offensive route. He's going to go for the Z into the Tapu Fini, and it is indeed Continental Quatch. He's going to take out that Tapu Fini for sure. So it's going to give Pogis a slight disadvantage at this point in time. However, looking at this matchup, I would have to say that it's still possible for Pogis to pull back. Seeing as the assault, the, the um, Rocky Helmet Tangrowth, if it is indeed that, is quite well against this Megalopony, Cartana, and even potentially against the Drachi. And the Finny has taken a lot of chips, so yeah, it's really only the Zapdos, which does well against it. And Zapdos without Hidden Power Ice couldn't really do much to Landers too, without Heatwood can't really do much to Drachi. And also there's a Rotom Heat there to potentially take advantage of it as well. What's also worth noting is that um, Finny didn't really serve many purposes here for Pogis, so. I think that preserving the health of this Tangrowth was of the utmost importance, given the matchup here. So I don't think that was a poor play from Pogis necessarily, but I do think that his matchup might be a bit constricted due to the offensive presences found on Ambo's team relative to the defensive presences found on his team, such as that guard charm sequence which just occurred. Um, we're going to see the Power Ice, sorry, no Hidden Power Ice here, but rather a Giga Drain here into that Zapdos, and it's not only do 16%, which is interesting. Um, I'm curious to see what he switches to. I think that Landorus T and Drachi both have some merit, but Rotom Heat's the safest play. The issue with going Rotom Heat, of course, is that it's going to be taking Stealth Rock upon entry, which is 25%, which is just no heavy duty boost this generation, which honestly limits Rotom Heat's viability to the point where it's UU Pokemon and it's really seldom utilized in OU. Um, like, there are some UUs that are quite viable, for example, but. Rotom Heat really isn't one of them that you see very often. We're going to see a heat wave here, so it's smart not to go Drachi, and even um, the Landorus T would have taken a number of damage as well. So that only took 14 there. You could easily potentially go for a Pain Split on a switch to something. Actually, no, it can't, because the switch into this are like the Zapdos and the Garchomp for 30%, so going for Pain Split would not be a good idea. Roost happens here on a Toxic, but Misty trains up, which blocks the Roost, which with Roost blocks the Toxic, which is a really good play there from Empo. Um, that was really smart. And now he goes for an overheat for some reason. I don't know why he went for overheat there instead of toxic, but maybe it's picking the guard chomp. If he goes for toxic here, he could redeem himself though. And he does go for toxic. He toxics his Zapdos, which is huge. As now all of a sudden the Tangrowth is actually really annoying for Empo to take out. So he goes for hidden power ice here. So revealing his three attacks. And we're going to see a Volt Switch critical hit there. Overheat did 50. So this is already a, a very physically defensive variant of Zapdos against a more defensive oriented Rotomy. But that Volt Switch crit is actually going to be quite problematic as it leaves it in Mawal range or Landorus T Stone Edge range. Um, Drachi is going to come in here knowing you can take two heat waves, even if there's some special attack investment, which there likely isn't going to be, as it's going to be physically defensive on this team structure. And we're going to see a wish here. Um, I wonder what he's going to heal up. I think that Rotom Heat would be the apply. Um, I'm just wondering if he's going to U-turn to it, or yeah, he's going to U-turn to it, all I good if he has it. Otherwise, he's probably going to go for Body Slam or Iron Head here. He's going to U-turn to it. See, he's going to go to Rotom Heat, and he's going to double right back to that Jirachi. If I had to guess. Yeah, he goes Rotom Heat. Mawile would have been an okay play too, but it would have just taken another Hydro Pump and Drain for this, and it's not really worth it. You don't gain much out of that sequence. So yeah, what's interesting to me is this is Rotom Heat's not leftovers. I'm wondering what item it could be. Could it be a Pinch Berry, like Yappa Berry or Figgy Berry? Wouldn't that have shown after Stealth Rock was triggered and put this at full health though? So I don't know. Maybe he's got um, a type Resistance Berry. Honestly, I'm not too sure, but if this is a faster Rotom Heat, he might stay in here and get a little greedy. However, Hydro Pump does so much damage to super effective things, or things that aren't too especially bulky, so I wouldn't be shocked if he um, stayed and if he wasn't fast. And yeah, he goes for the Volt Switch, so I'm thinking he's faster than that. Um, and he encounters the opposing Jirachi, it does a mere 18% here. I'm wondering if the play is going to be to go Tangrowth or Landorus T. Or even, um, I don't think going on Mawile will actually be a play there, because while it could knock off her fire thing, it's also susceptible to Iron Head flinches, and if it goes for Sucker Punch, it's not going to kill from this range after leftovers, and also that could bait in something like the Cartana or, Mawa, or Cartana or Megalopony to get a free switch in, and that would not be great in the face of a Mega Mawile. We're going to see the Jirachi and Jirachi action here, interestingly enough. Both of them, of course, are going to recover from leftovers, and they're both defensive. I think Ampo is probably his wish as well. But it's probably more of a defensively oriented wish. Is both go for that wish, which is interesting. Um, I 
What's worth noting is Enpo is quicker here. So if there's a U-turn interaction or the, um, yeah, there's the U-turn interaction. So that's going to mean that the Poja side is going to be getting a wish with momentum. So he's going to bring the Mawile back in. And that's going to get all the way back up to full against the Megalopony. I feel as if Poja is playing this game really well. But he's not even going to risk the high jump kick crit potentially. Um, as he goes to Tangrowth and it crit the Tangrowth, which really sucks for Poja. Now he goes later to see on a likely ice punch here if he has it. He goes for Frustration, which also does a number to this offensive Scarf Landris. He stays in on the U-turn. Tangrowth comes right back in here. Minus one Megalopony, likely not able to do a ton to it. I only just 19 of that Frustration, leaving it at below half after the Rocky Helmet damage. Um, Helmet arguably did as much as the um, Frustration there, in all honesty. Now we're going to see the Jirachi come in on a Giga Drain. 8% damage there. It's probably going to have to take a knockoff here, or even potentially an Earthquake, as I don't see much reason for the Tangrowth to switch out. Um, instead, we're going to see the Jirachi come in on a U-turn, though. I'm not loving that, as it's going to invite the Kartana in. Um, so, Pojus has to be very careful against this Kartana. I think that his play actually is to go to Mawile, because now that it's at full health, being able to check this is really one of the main pauses, and that's probably why he didn't let it take a high jump kick. Um, I think the play here for Ampo is simply to go for a knockoff. Um, as it also gets the helmet on the Tangrowth, and it does a number to the Rotom Heat, and reveals what item it would be, as well as knocking off the Scarf and the Landorus, which means you're faster and everything. The only downside, of course, is knocking off the Mawile, which is what I think Empo's going to honestly should be anticipating here. Going to honestly should be. That is not a sentence. What Empo should be anticipating here is a Mawile switching, but I think it's okay if he knocks into that, in all honesty, as his Finny is low and very fodderable. And same with the Garchomp. But let's wait and see. Um... Tangrowth here on the Smart Strike, predicting the Mawile. So it's going to reveal itself to be a Choice Banded variant. That did 43% there to Tangrowth. Yeah, that's a lot of damage right there. So smart play approach is not to go to Mawile. And nice anticipation there, Empo going for that Smart Strike, which does more to both the Tangrowth and the Mawile. It just didn't hit the Jirachi. So I don't think Poja staying in was a possible play in this world, as he needed the direction for other things. So it was a really smart play. We're going to see a double here to Landorus T which perhaps was a mid-ground predicting this or willing to fodder itself in the Smart Strike, and it worked wonders here. Um, now, I think he's going to go right back to Tangrowth, predicting the Fake Out or a Double Switch, something such as, um, I don't know, but you can see Regenerator pretty much. Yeah, um, that's cool. We're going to see Zapdos here, and he's going to stay in and go for the U-turn, and it's going to take Rocky Helmet and Static. Oh, that's really unfortunate for the Poja side there. Ah, oh, damn. Um, I feel like Poe just had a little edge here, but now he kind of lost it. But he's going to get a wish here as the Jirachi goes for wish. Yeah, indeed. On Zapdos' Volt Switch, which is quicker. Now, wish here, is it going to be Protect or is it going to be Body Sun? That, that's going to determine a lot. But also, um, can this Rotom Heat switch in safely and live a Sacred Sword or a knockoff after Stealth Rock? That's big, too. I think actually Mawile is the play for Poe's here if it does not Protect, of course. Because Mawile lives any one hit, which is almost all the way back up to fall if it's Smart Strike or all the way to fall against other moves and then potentially deal out a, a death, deadly blow to this Kartana, so it's cool. Um, Poach's timer is running quite low. That's worth noting as well. He's only at 60 seconds now. These guys definitely think that they're playing a pretty solid game all around. Um, hmm. He's gonna go Tangrowth, which is in Smart Strike range. And it dies to the Smart Strike. I can't help but think that was the wrong play there from the Pogis end. But that was a correct play there from the Empo side. Um, but yeah, losing that is really bad. I don't think Pogis can come back at this point in time. Um, the Landris T is weak and paralyzed. Um, Mawile can potentially live a hit from a non-boosted Gartana, as can Rotom Heat, or if it's locked into either stab move. But in the long haul, it's going to be a feud left for Gretchen comes in here now on an overheat. That's going to take it out, of course putting it in a 5-4 to four position for Rambo, but the lead is far more than that, as the um, Landers T is essentially dead, the Drachi is weakened, and this is weakened, whereas the free switch initiative for Rambo, and with the Tangrowth gone, and the Landers T paralyzed, this is easily going to come in and pick a kill off with a Frustration. If it doesn't want to, he's going to be able to do that here, yup. And now I presume the Mawile comes in here, which is at full health, which is good, but, um, hmm. Zapdos fodder makes a ton of sense here as it doesn't really do much to the special defensive Jirachi or the Toxic Rotom Heat. 
So I think he just goes there, and then he can probably just go Karkana and click Smart Strike. He's going to miss High Jump Kick. Ooh. Wait, is there a chance? Miss High Jump Kick on the player off. Okay. But. Hmm. Um, Smart Strike doesn't kill from this range, which is really big. Hmm. If Pudges had Swords Dance, I think that was a bit of a joke. I think he had to go for Swords Dance there. Yeah. Honestly, Swords Dance won. Yeah. Um. I think that Empo still has this, though, barring a Hydro Pump miss. Um, or losing a lot of turns, honestly. Still have to wait and see. Momo is very dangerous, though. And Rotom Heat honestly can be as well. If it outspeeds the right things at the right time. I don't know what spreads Rotom Heat run in this generation, though, in all honesty, because it's just not a very common option. So let's wait and see. But this game went from very likely to over to not quite over due to high jump kick missing there. So, yeah, definitely um, some very exciting twist of events here. Hmm. Um, for those wondering, by the way, it is uh, a bit before noon on a Sunday. Um, of the round of quarterfinals, and the winner of this series plays the winner of Bloody Alpha versus McMegan, which is going to be later this afternoon. I'm not sure if I'll be able to bring it to you guys, as it might overlap with my dinner, depending on how late it starts. If it's a 2 p.m. start instead of a 3 or 4 p.m. start, then I don't like that I will also be able to bring that to you guys. And um, there are 220 people watching this game right now, so definitely some high stakes here. A lot of people interested in the outcome of the series and seeing if Ampo's historic run is going to be able to um, transcend um, his previous playoff norms of falling in the first couple of rounds, and reach um, uh, unprecedented heights for someone like Empo and let him get into the semifinals, finals, or even win the whole thing. So wait and see there for sure. But in the meantime, he's taking his time to think this one through. I think he's ultimately... Oh, he goes Zapdos. Interesting play there. Um, perhaps not fearful of a sucker punch. Uh, maybe he knows it's an elemental uh, mobile. Hmm. Another thing worth talking is how much does Choice Ben Cartana do to this Mega Mobile? He shouldn't kill after another Stealth Rock switch in, even if he has no HP. It's only an outside chance to do so, because it's only taking 6.5. So after, after, let's say after a spike, for example, because that's two Stealth Rocks, it still has an 18.8% chance to kill. So if I'm Pogius here, I just go for Sucker Punch. If I have it. If not, then I probably have to switch out to the Jirachi. Hmm. You really don't want to be in smart strike range, that's much just for sure. Poe just actually takes his time, and then finally with 10 seconds left, elects to go Rotom Heat on that Roost. Interesting, okay. This is still an overheat range, given the roll before, though. So another Roost comes out here on the Z. Inferno Drive, 75% there. And now the follow-up overheat is going to do 50. Okay, so that, that makes sense, it was a Z user. Yeah, um, nothing else will use Z, so that, that made a ton of sense on that was this. So now follow up overheat plus poison, likely we'll be able to take out this Zapdos. Um, yeah. I wonder what he's going to go for, in, in, given that. Um, he might actually... Um, well, if his Finny is faster than this, he could go for a Volt Switch here, eat that um, overheat after Stealth Rock and then Defog, but no, he goes for another Roost, which is going to ultimately end futile as overheat's going to take it out after the poison damage, of course, but that will leave it at minus two and give Kartana a chance to come in for the revenge kill and try and go for the sweep. Um, however, Leaf Blade is going to be required to kill this, not um, not Smart Strike, and Leaf Blade won't be able to take out the Mawile. Normal Knockoff, which would also take it out, or Sacred Sword, which would also take it out. Uh, plus one Sacred Sword, probably comes the closest. Actually, wow, it actually can. Wait. Oh my god, there's 96.6 min. Oh, okay, never mind. Sacred Sword should win the game here now, yeah. Um... Unless Sucker Punch range, but uh, it's an outside roll at best, and that's if it is Sucker. Um, yeah, given this, um, 96 men is what we're seeing here. Uh, and it's Sucker, and he gets the Sucker roll. Wow. Um, low chance there. Um, yeah, it was um, 44 to 52. Um. So it was Sucker after all. He didn't go for it before, interestingly enough. Um, here comes the Finny. 
in trying to bring it into Jirachi range, perhaps, because Jirachi might be able to live a Sucker Punch. Um, will the sub combine just max HP? And no, it actually doesn't always live a Sucker This is crazy. Um, Hydro is going to connect there and do 52 on a Thunder Punch. So this is perhaps a Thunder Punch Swords Dance variant. Um, we're going to see Jirachi here, though. Um, so here comes a lot. Um, this turn's going to be... Oh, he's probably... He goes Smart Play. He goes back to the Jirachi there on a Protect. And now he's going to be able to wish pass to it if it does get flinched out, but it's only doing 11% a pop, so he's going to wish there. And if he can get a U-turn off here, that's great. But I don't actually, I think you stay in here. Yeah, you stay in here for sure. Because now you can recover all the way up. And now you could wish a U-turn. And this game actually favors Pogis. So Pogis might be able to two oh Empo in Empo's two best generations if he's able to get a Swords Dance up. Or if it's not Glast or Fire Fang Glast. He goes for, yeah, U-turn Protect that. That's smart. Um... So yeah, um, Ampo doesn't have enough PP to win this game from here, as he's got 14 plus 13, which is 27, plus 21, which brings up to 48, plus, let's say 30, so we're like almost 80, but look at this, it has, you know, 29 plus 29 plus 10, so it puts it like at 70 itself, and then the last move, so there's no way in hell that um, Ampo wins this game, it's over from here, really well played game from Pogis, in all honesty. Um... A couple turns that I disagreed with, but overall, he really played his outs well. Um, admittedly, the Hydrum Kick miss was unfortunate for Empo, but he did get a bit luckier early on in the game. Um, if you scroll up a bit, which unfortunately you guys can't do, um, he got the Hydrum Kick critical hit on the Tangrowth, and then I feel as if Empo misplayed in foddering off the Tangrowth, but ultimately he found his way around it anyway, um, due to the Sucker Punch roll on the Mawile. So yeah, I'd say that late game really favored Pogis RNG-wise. As Empo just goes for the Iron Head flinches, but there's not enough PP to do that, especially with a wish here just on any one um, given non flinch, which he got just before. So, yeah, Pogis is going to upset Empo 2 0. Empo's magical season, where he put up 78 points, has fell short, and Pogis has shocked the world and beat Empo. Not only beat him, but beat him 2 0 in Empo's two best generations, which is a really um, dominant victory for Pogis here. Um, yeah, this wasn't the cleanest victory, but still a very impressive showing. As for Empo, though, his run was just phenomenal. Um, Empo is clearly a very skillful player, and he has a knack for playing offense at a higher level than a lot of newer players who tend to fall back on more passive outs on their own. So all in all, I'm very impressed with Empo as a player, and I'm looking forward to seeing him in the future. 2020 has been his year so far despite this loss, and I'm really curious to see if he's able to win another individual tournament, such as, say... OLT or the next version of Smog on Tour. So definitely a very fierce competitor. Um, we're going to actually see it in the knockoff run here, but he gets the wish off there. And that's wrap. Um, yeah, I'm just, wait just waiting for PP to run out at this point. I don't see a way out for the Empo side. Um, I don't know if he's necessarily going to forfeit yet, because why not? Give them the point zero 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 one chance that some sort of disconnect happens or you just like, he, he wastes all of his wish PP. There's only four left, but he only has enough real attacks to do so limit damage is he only has 14 pp between iron head and u-turn and this is leftovers perpetually so yeah i don't see a chance in all honesty um this is actually empo's first sm loss of the season he won three sm tours and didn't join any others so honestly this happening here no one could have predicted that um empo's a great player poges however i'm um, sure that he also has another year he's a very capable player and i'm um, going to wrap um Kind of just talking for the sake of talking at this point as this is I'm down to stretch. But yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like and comment your thoughts on the series and the narration, of course. Um, and if you like a lot of stuff on my channel, feel free to subscribe. I'm actually close to 800 subscribers, which is cool. But what even cooler would be getting to 1,000 in the next couple weeks. Um, so I can see if we can get there or not. But in um, the meantime, I'm definitely going to keep putting stuff up um, because you guys have been really great. Besides very um, few of you, few and far in between that have actually been kind of lame. Um, but I digress. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of going through the motions here, PP wise. Um, so timeout is pretty much the win condition here. I guess Ampo is just saying, okay, fine. I only have so much PP anyway. It's 11 plus three. That's only 14 PP left. Whereas this has, um, yeah, far more PP. It's just so much less PP on this Jirachi set than this Jirachi set. So Ampo finally concedes in turn 108, well, after 108, 409. And that's going to be a 2-0 victory for Poges, the pride of Europe. Emerging victorious in upsetting fashion against Ampo 2-0 in both SS and SM. I hope you guys enjoyed this narration, and be sure to stay tuned for more in the future. Peace, guys. Have a great day.